everybody, welcome back to the CTTechJunkie.com podcast. And we've been uh, profiling newsmakers and, and high tech uh, companies throughout the state. And today we've got somebody who uh, definitely was ahead of his time. Uh, it is David Schmid from uh, the Free Juice Bar. And they started making car charging stations long before they were the cars, in fact, were commercially available. And uh, David's joining us via Skype uh, to tell us a little bit about the company. And uh, really, how did you, you why did you decide to get into something? It was a lot of risk uh, building car charging stations before there were cars to charge, right? Yeah, well, thank you, first of all, Alon, for ha having us on. We really appreciate it. We're excited to be a, a Connecticut-based business. In fact, uh, our group um, that's involved has, has been building businesses in Connecticut for over 25 years. And uh, one of those businesses, a uh, business named ProPark, a parking management company based out of Hartford, Connecticut, based out of the, the train station in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, is really how we develop the, the juice bar and now it is on its own and it has, uh, has become its own company in its own right and we actually were developing the greenest parking lot uh, we like to call it the greenest parking lot on the planet for sure the greenest parking lot in the United States we uh, we built a lead gold facility uh, that facility was powered and is powered by by wind and solar it has geothermal uh, it's 42 acres at uh, at the Denver International Airport. It has about 40 4,200 cars that park on it, and it has everything from biodiesel shuttles to um, you know roof roof uh, I guess what do you call them roof shingles are are actually what the pavement is made out of. I mean it's a completely green facility, and during that process is when we said, look, we want to have the coolest, best, most forward thinking electric vehicle charging station uh, ever, and so we. We uh, hired BMW Design Works out of L.A. Uh, BMW Design Works, 50% of their time they work on BMWs, and 50% of their time they actually design for uh, the outside world, like ourselves. And we, uh, we went to them and asked them to help us design a forward-looking, uh, really cool um, electric vehicle charging station, and they did that for us in 2010. And so, yes, we were very far ahead of our time. In fact, in, in January... Uh, 2011, there were only 180 plug-in electric vehicles on the road, and um, and so we've seen the marketplace go from uh, very small to uh, in January 2012, there were 18,000 electric vehicles on the road, to uh, January 2013, 72,000 electric vehicles on the road, and now we're well over 100,000 plug-in electric vehicles on the road. Um, in, in the United States. And so it's an exciting time. We have some hockey stick growth going on uh, in the electric vehicle world. And as a result, there's a real demand, uh, a marketplace demand for electric vehicle charging stations. Yeah, I can tell you owning electric vehicle and my, uh, my father recently got one too. So we're, uh, you know, having a place to charge is a, is a good thing. And do, do you think that the infrastructure can be built to support all of these cars when, when they're out there? Because I know that the uh, CLMP has been talking about the, the their approach has been to focus on evening charging, which makes a lot of sense, obviously, because there's capacity issues that they want to maintain uh, throughout the uh, throughout the 24 hour cycle. Um, so I, I noticed from your charges, that you can actually charge more than one car at a time off of each unit. Right. So how, how many can you support typically? Yes. Yeah, so the uh, the vehicle that you charge off in New Haven uh, at the Chapel Square garage uh, underneath the Omni Hotel, uh, that um, uh, Juice Bar can actually charge four different vehicles uh, at the same time. They have two what's called level two charging stations, and that's a 220 volt charge. If you show up on empty, it's about about a four hour uh, recharge. Most people don't show up on empty. Most people need to top off. Uh, they, they, most people are really planners with their electric vehicle because they want to make sure they have enough juice in their car. And so uh, normally people are there a couple hours. Um, but then we also have two 110 plugs. They're also called level one plugs. These are the, the plugs that you would plug a, a computer into or, you know, your iPhone when you're charging it. Uh, we have two of those on that unit as well. And so you can charge up to four cars. What we're finding, are there, there's different types of needs in the marketplace. Sometimes people are there all day. They go to work. Uh, just like um, you mentioned, Northeast Utilities um, is, is focused on overnight charging. You know, there's a lot of people that come to work and just want to plug in all day. And, and for that, a, a 110 plug works fine. And, and that's why we built 110 plugs into our, into our machines. But for the other people who want to go have lunch or they're going to a function at the Omni or they're going out for dinner uh, down in New Haven, uh, two hours 
really helps them power up and, and gives them enough uh, juice and power to, to go back on their way. So uh, we can charge up to four cars off one uh, juice bar. And that's kind of neat, too, because there's one installation uh, around four different charging units. And so that's, uh, that's kind of a competitive advantage of ours. And what's the uh, maximum amperage that you can provide on a, on a 240 charge? Well, we install our, our uh, we install all of our juice bars with 50 amps. The range usually goes up to 32 amps. Right. We, we we like to have a little higher amount of amperage um, so that you know breakers don't get tripped and things of that nature. But 32 is the top of the range, and we're seeing really only one car, um, maybe two, pull at that high top high uh, part of the range. Right, the Tesla, right? Tesla does, but also the the BMW um, Active E does as well. Okay. Pulls it end of the range mm. yeah it's remarkable too because you know having uh, driven a tesla and, and owning a volt the the amount mm. of uh charge speed that you, we're going to start seeing because the tesla just can take whatever you can give it um you know if you have the, the, the dual charging arrangement in there it, i think it can pull down like uh, 60 amps or 80 amps at once so it's a pretty pretty big uh monster there so we'll, we'll see how it develops so where in connecticut uh can we find juice bars now uh, right now in Connecticut, you can find them at uh, 777 Main Street. Where, uh, it's really on Asylum Street is where the entrance is, uh, right near uh, Fang's Restaurant. So that's in, in Hartford? That's in Hartford. You also can find them in, uh, in New Haven, where you found them. We're about to install two more at 777 Main Street, uh, be, honestly, because we're full. Um, okay. We have the five electric vehicles plugging in there every day. There's a little bit of a line, so we're actually adding more chargers. You also can find one at the Greater Hartford Transit District in Hartford, uh, right by the train station. So we have installed juice bars in some uh, 10, um, 10 different states, 18 different cities. So we've, we've uh, not just Connecticut bound, we've, we've installed everywhere from Hawaii uh, to Boston uh, and down to, uh, down to you know, D.C. And uh, we've lots of proposals out there. It's, it's actually a really exciting time for us. And I, I know the, uh, there's been a, a big investment, both private and public, in, in developing technology startups like yours. And I know that you were involved with the CT Next uh, uh, developments there. So, so how did how did the CT Next group help you? Is that a was that a state thing, a, a, a private sector thing, or is it a combination of the two that uh, helped you get this thing off the ground? Right. So we got it off the ground with personal funds, um, and then when what happened was the fourth quarter of last year, a lot of the electric vehicles started showing up, and we recognized at that point that we needed to scale our company. That our company, uh, the timing was right. There was a hockey stick in growth in electric vehicles. There's a demand for chargers. We saw the number of proposals we were putting out the door really spike, and we said, you know, we need to fill out our company, actually hire people, which is a great thing to be able to say in this economy. Absolutely. We need to hire people, and uh, I started talking to some some friends I knew uh, at this at uh, at different places, including uh, Kevin Booley of Nirac. Our offices are actually in the Nirac complex over in Tallinn, uh, which houses uh, quite a few incubator type companies. And Kevin is the one that put us in touch with with CT Next um, and uh, the Innovation Hub. So it's uh, what those groups did. They really helped us. Uh, focus in. We had a we had a great team. We had a great product. We maybe had too many ideas for the marketplace. And so what they did is they helped us. They acted sort of like a magnifying glass or a lens, like when you're when you're shining light with a magnifying glass um, onto onto uh, you know a piece of wood or something. They helped us lens in and focus in on the three or four or five areas that we needed to really understand, focus, and hit. And that focusing has really brought our team together. Uh, that focusing has really helped us define what we're going to be doing in the marketplace and actually helped us define what we're not. You know, it's uh, we're not certain things and we are certain things. So they helped us really bring into focus uh, and take us from, you know, a, a stage two company to, to a fully launched company. So they've, they've been invaluable in their help and efforts. And it's a great, uh, great partnership that we've had with them. And I guess it must be hard to go from being a parking lot company to making hardware. Was that a, I would imagine that's some of the help that they provided. Was that difficult culturally for your organization to really think beyond, you know, construction and, and parking spaces to making a product? Well, you know, our, um, the, ans the answer is uh, yes and no. <laughs> so the, the yes part is, of course, my, my background has been in, in parking for some uh, 28 years. And when we started doing development projects, uh, we've had to learn a lot in our in our time as uh, uh, as entrepreneurs. 
And we made a conscious decision that um, I would come out of uh, the company for Pro Park and go and, and operate Garage Park, a completely separate company. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to, to make sure of is that we had, we had that firewall. And so uh, we have offices outside of here and, and uh, outside of, uh, of the Pro Park offices. We are actually our own company and we, um, we sell to the marketplace. So we, uh, there was some transition, but, but quite frankly, there is uh, equipment in parking garages. There's technology in parking garages. And so uh, people think of parking as, uh, you know, you go in and you get a ticket from someone. Well, nowadays parking can be completely automated and, and you use a lot of technology. And so we're not unfamiliar with the technology aspect, um, but yes, it was different. Um, and yes, they did help us focus in on um, how, how to go about the manufacturing process better and, and what to look for. And, you know, I didn't know certain questions to ask that they were able to help me with. And, you know, this is maybe like a little bit of an inside baseball question, but there's been a lot of the, um, uh, debate amongst electric car owners about what happens when your car is full, but it's still plugged in. And uh, I know from, from both the Tesla and the Volt, the Volt alarm will go off if you pull the plug out when it's plugged in. Uh, the Tesla locks the, uh, the charger into the car, so you can't remove it unless you have the key. What, what are you doing to help uh, alleviate some of these disputes that electric car owners might have in one of your parking lots? It's a great question. You know, one of the things that we, we really feel strongly about is that level one as a supplement is a really um, important thing. And so uh, in, our, in our juice bars, of course, we have up to four charging units, uh, the two level twos, two level ones. And if those are consistently full, the real answer is the facility needs more units. If you think of a, a parking garage uh, with 500 spaces uh, and you have a 1%, 2% penetration rate at some point in time, you know, you're going to need five to 10 charging points. And so at some point, it makes sense to add another charging station. Uh, until that time, uh, yeah, this is an area that is still uh, in developing. As an early adopter, you know this. There, there are a lot of um, people that are coming to the table with different ideas on, on how to do this. But the Tesla locking is, is one way. Uh, the alarm is, is another way. Uh, adding more stations, uh, frankly, is what we've been recommending. If you're getting that much usage out of them, um, we like to call our juice bars hummingbird feeders. It's right. kind of, we put this this uh, this juice bar over over at 777 Main Street, and you would never know that there were that many electric cars in that area. Uh, we had five show up in one day, and, and you never knew you had hummingbirds until you put out a hummingbird feeder. You never knew <laughs> right, what you're gonna get. until you put out electric vehicle charging station. So um, there, that protocol, though, is something that's still really being developed, and, and uh, I don't know that there is a, a, a simple answer to that. And what differentiates what you're doing from, because there's, you know, charging stations are dime a dozen to some degree out there, right? I mean, there's other competitors in the marketplace. What, what differentiates what, what Juice Bar is doing to what other companies are offering? Sure. So Juice Bar, uh, one of the things that we had to define is what Juice Bar is not. Juice Bar is not uh, just simply a, a commodity product uh, acting as the utility for charging. Juice Bar is about branding. Uh, your facility as a, as a green facility, making a statement about sustainability for your facility. Um, we, you know, we were developed by BMW, and one of the things they really ingrained in us and, and helped forward design in the product was that, um, you know, we're a premium branded um, car charging station. And so, one of the things that we do is we don't just put in a, a car charging station, as you experienced down in. Um, New Haven, we also put in uh, race deck flooring. We always suggest that they're put in right at the entrance of a garage. We put in LED lighting to light up the, the, uh, the area. We actually call it a green garage oasis is, is actually what we do is we don't just do a charging station. We'll do flooring, we'll do lighting, we do recycling, we do tire inflation. You know, tire inflation stations, we're talking about holistically, not just for the electric vehicle, but for any vehicle. If you inflate your tires, it actually makes a great deal of difference on your, your mileage. And so what we've done is uh, we also have uh, car vacuums that are available. Again, what we want to do is have people use amenities in the garage, use the electric vehicle charging station, understand more about sustainability. Um, and so we're not just about charging cars. We're about a sustainability movement, and we're about a premium amenity. You know, one of the things we, we think is 
you know, 20, 30 years ago, not every Class A office building in the country had a defibrillator. Now every Class A office building in the country has at least one. And so we feel that every Class A office building in the country will have a electric vehicle charging station. And we feel that if they want the premium electric vehicle charging station, they're going to choose us. And that's, that's one of our differentiators. So, and, and certainly the industrial design is, 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 is there because uh, it, it certainly stands out when you, uh, when you pull into that. And I, and I guess you're, you're looking, you mentioned a little bit about the tire inflation and other sustainability things. I, I, I understand that you're looking at, look, at bike, bicycles and, and storing those or parking those and inflating tires too. So is, is there there's some tie-in with that as well? Yeah, so part of the Green Garage Oasis is bike parking. Uh, one interesting thing we found when we, when we actually uh, installed these in San Francisco is that we actually had um, electric bikes plugging in uh, in San Francisco. People use oh, really? bikes a lot more on the West Coast, I, I think, than maybe in Connecticut. But for sure, in, in more urban cities, you're seeing more and more electric bikes popping up. Uh, we're also looking at uh, people charge their electric motorcycles, people charge their electric scooters. And so it's really about sustainable mobility. It's, it's not just about electric vehicles. And that's, you know, that's something we've become really educated on over this time frame. You know, yeah, you asked me about other differentiators about, um, about Juice Bar. Juice Bar was forward designed, and so we're somewhat technology agnostic. We, we now have level twos and level ones. In, again, at the Juice Bar you park at in uh, New Haven, we actually even have a Tesla, a Clipper Creek Tesla unit in, in one side of it, so Teslas can plug in on their own native plug. Uh, we also, um, you know, are looking at uh, the reason the box is so big is because we're looking at uh, uh, second generation batteries. These batteries over time uh, come down in their efficiency in these electric vehicles. And there's gonna be a second life for those batteries. And, and our design is actually forward designed to accept uh, batteries in the future. Oh, wow, so, so you could charge off, maybe off solar or something during the day and have some, some residual power for the evening that was cleanly generated then, I guess is what it sounds like. Or you can grid arbitrage at night mm -hmm. when the flow of power, there's much flow of power wasted at night, and you can grid arbitrage off, off uh, low cost night grid um, non-use. People aren't using as much power, but the grid still flows power, and you can you can arbitrage that battery uh, battery charging at night. So there's there's many ways and forward designs, and there's going to be many iterations of these. But what we wanted to make sure of is that our brand didn't change, that our our iconic uh, look didn't change. You know, one of the reasons we're so tall. Lon, is that we used to go into these uh, garages and see an electric vehicle charging station, and you, you know, you could see it when there wasn't a car there. Right. But when a car parked in front of it, all of a sudden it disappeared, and so that was one of the reasons we wanted it so large, just so people could see it. Yeah, and, and especially too, because I, I've I've driven around looking for the charging station, especially like New Haven train station is a great example where it's there, but you really got to you got to look for it if it's not that prevalent. Although with uh, you know, with the juice bar, you have that backlit sign in there that it, it really kind of beckons you that your your fuel is your fuel is near. So this uh, is near, and actually that color blue is uh, on on the juice bar is actually the color of electricity, uh, which is that BMW design. So everything in our brand has has some meaning and some purpose. So it's it's fun, but yes, that that is one of the benefits of having a juice bar. And and final question, just to target audiences, uh, you mentioned Class A office buildings and, and parking lots. Is that is that the, the approach for publicly accessible places, think places where the public will be uh, visiting and, and, and seeing, is that kind of the market you're targeting? Yeah, great question. What, what, um, there's, there's a group called Pikes Research that's done a lot of research in the area of electric vehicles. And, and they've, they've stated, in, especially in the earlier years, there's going to be the need for two chargers for every electric vehicle, one of those chargers being at home and one being out somewhere in the world where people, people go. Uh, the obvious place is where people work is, is definitely a place that people need to be able to have access to these electric vehicle charging stations. So the Class A office buildings, the lead uh, facility, the environmentally uh, designated facilities need to have uh, charging stations. But we also think places like uh, uh, supermarkets and movie theaters, uh, transportation centers, hotels, um, places like that. Uh, uh, really need any place you're there more than a couple hours really needs to have uh, an electric vehicle charging station and we're excited because uh, you know, as of this last month there there may have been I think less than 10,000 charging publicly available charging stations and there's, and there's over 100,000 vehicles and if everyone has one at home and we need one in the public 
wow, what an opportunity for companies like ours, a Connecticut-based company, to uh, to go out and fill that need, that marketplace need that's now developed uh, out there. We're, we're very excited about it. And are these manufactured in Connecticut or, or somewhere in, in the country? They are manufactured in the U.S. We manufacture them out in uh, California right now. Uh, and so we, uh, but all of our operations, all of our employees are based out of Connecticut. Excellent. Well, David Schmidt, thank you so much for joining us today. And it's, uh, it's exciting to see uh, this development happening. I'm a little biased because as a uh, electric vehicle owner, it's nice to have some places to plug in. My car at least will go to gas, but I try not to use that gas as much as possible. So uh, hopefully we'll see uh, more juice bars soon. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for being with us. And where can people find more information about what you do? Thanks, Lon. You can find us at www dot free juice bar dot com and you can visit us uh, on facebook as well we'd love to get your uh, your likes thank you so much no problem and thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for watching we'll be back again next time with another uh, connecticut technology newsmaker this is lon seidman thanks for watching